Okay, we're back and we're computing the MLE for linear regression, for Gaussian linear regression with a known variance. And we, we have our data, we assume a probabilistic model, we want to maximize the likelihood function, so we took our likelihood, we wrote down an expression for the likelihood function, and we simplified it, so we, we got this, and then we simplified this, this sum by observing that it was equal to just the uh, the norm of this thing squared, or or the the dot product of this vector, y minus a w with itself, where a was this design matrix thing. And now, so let's rewrite that. Let's rewrite what what we what we just found. So the probability of the data given theta equals. I'll just write this out. One over two. This part isn't going to matter. One over two pi sigma squared to the n times e to the minus 1 over 2 pi sigma squared times y minus a w transpose times y minus a w. Right. So now to maximize this guy, that's what we want to do. Uh, so this, um, maximizing this is equivalent to minimizing this part here. You know, you could check that, you, know, you just, this part's the only part that depends on w, you know, you take the log, this is a constant, so that's not going to matter, uh, you know, you, this is, this is constant, so we can just, this, this doesn't matter, and the minus makes it going from maximizing to minimizing, so we want to minimize this. So in other words, our goal, our goal is to minimize, put it this way, so we want to minimize w or y minus aw transpose times y minus aw, just the square of this norm. Want to minimize. Okay, so let's let's uh. Let's see what we can do with that. that. Now, this is a nice linear algebra expression. This part's going to going to involve some linear algebra. So, if you aren't familiar with your linear algebra, you may want to brush up a little bit on it. So, let's. Um, what we're going to do is the calculus thing. We're going to take the gradient, set it equal to zero, and then look at the Hessian, do do all that stuff. So, let's multiply this out. This is y transpose y minus. 2 times y transpose a w because you know we take y transpose times a w here and a w transpose times y that's a scalar so we can transpose it and pull those together plus this becomes w transpose a transpose times a w okay so that's good and now to minimize this guy we are going to take the gradient. So the gradient, with respect to w, to be precise, of this, let's call this, um, I don't know, let's give it a name. Let's just call it like, let's call it um, L or something. So the gradient of this thing equals, well, the gradient, you know, the derivative of this with respect to w is always 0. So we get minus 2 y transpose, uh, let's see, what do we want here? This is, so the gradient, um, I guess we want to flip this first. So these, these can be, this can, maybe we should have written it this way. This is w transpose, because this is a scalar quantity. That's w transpose a transpose y. Right, so that's equal to two times a transpose y. So let's check that. That was a little little trick there. Oh, and then there's there's more. But um, well, let me finish saying what what I'm going to say here, and then we'll come back. Actually, let's divide this by two here. Sorry, I'm changing things up. That'll make things a little easier. We divide by two, then this two goes away. 
you know, because it doesn't matter. This is just a constant, so that doesn't affect the minimizer. Plus one half here. Okay, so this two is gone. Minus switch back to blue. Minus a transpose y. And now this is going to be a transpose a w. Um, so let's check those. I just claimed that this gradient is equal to that, and let's verify that. So we'll just do a little calculation here. If we have a vector a times and the dot product with w, that's just the sum a i w i. And if we take the partial derivative with respect to w j, say, then we just get a j. So the gradient, remember the gradient of a function is just the, so for this function, for example, it's the, the column vector of these partial derivatives. So it's the column vector partial with respect to w1, partial with respect to w2, partial with respect to wn, if these are, you know, n-dimensional or something. So this becomes just, it's just a, right? a1, a n, and that's just a. So that means that, so that proves this first claim here that, um, so I guess I wrote it this way, so a in this case would be y transpose a, uh, or a transpose is equal to that, rather. And so a is a transpose y. And that's exactly this. Now let's check the second claim. So if we have w transpose, um, let's say just bw for some generic matrix b, and uh, we want to take the derivative of this with respect to wj, this is a this is what's called a, um, oh right, well that's the partial, sorry. It's partial. This is called a quadratic form, and it's always equal to the sum over, uh, let's make this k actually. I want to use ij in the sum. Partial with respect to wk is the sum over all pairs i and j, and it's wi w, j, and let's assume here, so let's assume b is symmetric. Makes things a little simpler. And, and in fact, this a transpose a is always symmetric, so that's fine. So we have this sum over all, pair, uh, over all this is all i and j from 1 to n. And um, if you take the partial derivative of this with respect to w, k, when i equals j, so when i and j are equal to k, you're going to get, um, it's going to be w, k squared, and uh, so you'll get, so you'll get 2 w, k, b, k, k, when i equals j equals k, and when, um, if neither of them equals k, then it's just zero, and if only one of them equals k, that occurs exactly twice, and by our assumption that b is symmetric, by the way, this bij is the ij entry of b, by our assumption that this is symmetric, then bij equals bji, so, so that, so it occurs, it always occurs twice for any given for any given i, um, it always occurs twice that there is a, a factor w i w k b i k. So what do we get? So we get um, we get two times. Uh, well, I'm not quite writing. I'm not writing this quite right here. 
uh, sorry, so this is, this is what I meant, so let's write it down here. Partial with respect to WK, so I'm going to move it through WI, WJ, BIJ equals 2 WK, BK, K, if, so we'll get rid of this, that was the first case, if I equals J equals K, and the other case is if only, well, if, if neither of them is equal to K, then it's zero, and if only one of them is equal to K, then it's like WI if I, uh, if J equals K and I is not equal to J, and so on. So, you know, you can check the other cases also, and you find that since there's two of these, you know, because BIJ is symmetric, oh, sorry, I should have put uh, B. I J. This becomes it's just uh, uh, well I guess I should have put let's see so if I put I and I J here that's the same thing. I this is just a little calculation but I wanted to make sure you see how to do it. There's two of these occur and so we just get the sum over i from 1 to n of 2 times w i b i k. And that's the same as b k i because b is symmetric. And so this is just 2 times the the i th so it's um, the i throw well, it's, it's just two times the, the, the rather, the kth row of B, the inner product of that with, with W. So the gradient with respect to W of, you know, you line all these partial derivatives up in a, in a column, and that's just equal to two times BW. So that's just a little calculation. I wanted you to at least see roughly how it's done, and you can, um, so you can check that if you want. All right, so so that means we take the gradient of this guy with respect to w. We get uh, so the two cancels the one half, and we just get a transpose a w, and that's this. Okay, so that's good. So that's the gradient, and now we want to set that. So we want to get the minimum. So of this function, this is a, thinking of it as a function of w. So let's set that gradient equal to zero. Oh well, it's easy, right? We can just if we set the gradient equal to zero. If that equals zero, then we get a transpose a w equals a transpose y. And we want to solve this for w. So we can to find it well at least a critical point. So if so, here's a little aside. So we want to invert this a transpose a w. We'd like to do this, right? We'd like to say w equals a transpose a inverse times a transpose y. But we need, of course, we need a transpose a to be invertible. So um, it turns out that um, it's uh, under some mild conditions it is. Um, so let's stop there. We'll, we'll check those conditions uh, and we will uh, take the Hessian also and verify that, that, that this critical point is indeed a minimum in the next video. So all right, we're getting close now. We're, we're hot on the trail. So I'll, we'll be back in a minute.